Hello guys, in today's video, we're gonna check out the best best mirrorless camera for landscape photography in this year. I made this list based on my personal opinion, and I've tried to list them based on their price, quality, durability, and many more. To find out more information about these best mirrorless camera for landscape photography, you can check out the description below. If you want to get a best quality best mirrorless camera for landscape photography according to your needs, then watch the video till the end, and then decide to buy. At the first position of our list, we have Fujifilm X-T20. Fujifilm has arguably the most alluring APS-C system for landscape photographers, and the Fujifilm X-T20 is an excellent choice for photographers buying the mid-grade category. It's priced to match its lack of pro-grade features. However, compared to the pricier X-T2, the X-T20 only lacks weather sealing, a slightly bulkier grip, and a slight edge in ergonomics. As such, I do think that the X-T20 is a fantastic camera for the price, matching great image quality with solid build quality and above-average ergonomics. If you're buying the X-T20 in a kit, you have a choice between the 1650mF-3.5 5.6OIS and the 1855mF-2.84.0 OIS. Both are solid lenses, however I think it's worth the extra money for the 1855M as its max aperture range of f 2.84.0 can come in handy in some situations, like night photography. Regardless, buying this camera in a kit is a substantial value that should not be overlooked. Overall, I think the Fuji X-T20 is an amazing camera that offers a great value and will perform nearly on par with the more expensive X-T2 especially considering its new 24.3 megapixel sensor. It should come as no surprise for this to be my pick for best mid-grade mirrorless camera. Moving on to the next and number two with Sony A6000. The Sony A6000 is perhaps the best value for image quality mirrorless camera on the market. It lacks a few higher end features, such as touchscreen, LCD, and weather sealing, which partially explains its low price point. If you can go without these things, most folks can then the A6000 may be an excellent choice for an affordable but feature-rich mirrorless body. A couple of nice bonuses if you are a landscape photographer that occasionally shoots wildlife. The A6000 shoots a fast 11 frames per second and is one of the fastest autofocusing cameras on the planet. And considering its price for a 24 megapixel crop sensor, the Sony A6000 is one best value APS-C mirrorless cameras on the market right now. However, this camera does have a couple weaknesses. The menu system is rather convoluted, so at times it can be cumbersome to quickly switch settings. It does at least have a mode dial, which makes it an improvement over the budget-level Sony offerings. I also recommend buying the A6000 as the body only. The 1650 pancake-style kit lens not of high quality, so the few bucks you save by skipping the kit lens might go toward a quality lens purchased separately. My favorite landscape lens for the A6000E, the Sony's i16 7mf-4. The number 3 position is held by Olympus OMD EM10 Mark Roman II. Another great value, especially when you consider the lens packages below. The Olympus OMD EM10 Mark Roman II packs a big punch into a small body and also includes a touchscreen LCD. Its micro four-thirds sensor renders beautiful images and will suit the needs of a great many photographers, just as long as you don't need to print extremely large. In comparison to its main competitor, the Sony A6000, you might think that the EM10 Mark Roman II is inferior based on sensor size and resolution alone. But consider this, EM10 Mark Roman II has superior handling, with its dial-based operation being a pleasure to use. Another consideration is the fantastic lens packages available with this body. Olympus has now released the OMD EM10 Mark Roman III. However, I still highly recommend the EM10 Mark Roman II and may even prefer it in many ways to the Mark Roman III which has lost some of the Mark Roman II's features that I love for the sake of simplicity. Specifically, the Mark Roman III has less options for customizable function buttons, has eliminated the My Preset settings, and no longer accepts a shutter release cable. The Mark Roman II will likely go out of production eventually, but is still a great camera, and will likely see a price drop as the Mark Roman III takes over. Next at number 4 we have Sony A6300. 
a refresh of the A6000. The Sony A6300 features essentially the same specs, but with a weather-sealed body that now supports 4K video and the addition of a microphone jack and a few other minor improvements. If you are a landscape photographer that also does high-quality video, the quality of stills and video in a camera this size are likely unmatched anywhere on the market right now. Sony's A6300 does pack a strong punch in the size to feature ratio, especially with the video capability, and I highly recommend the camera with only the caveats below. The weather sealed body is a nice feature, but to get weather sealed lenses for this model, you'll have to drop an obscene amount of money for the Sony 24 7 mf 4 Vario Tessar and Sony 16 35 mf 4 Vario Tessar. Those lenses are too large for a body this size as they are designed for Sony full frame. In my opinion, if you're looking for weather sealing with the Sony system, you might as well go to one of their full frame mirrorless offerings. The Sony A7 is just a few bucks more. If you really, really want the freshest, shiniest Sony replete with a touchscreen LCD and in-camera stabilization, you could spring for the Sony A6500. But I'd save the money for a nice lens and grab the A6000 or A6300. And again, I'm only recommending these Sony APS-C cameras to those already shooting Sony. Photographers making the switch into mirrorless are better served than any of the Fujifilm, Olympus, or Panasonic crop sensors, or a Sony full-frame system in my opinion. The number 5 position is held by Fujifilm X-T2. The Fujifilm X-T2 might be considered the manufacturer's flagship camera among their fleet of high-quality APS-C size bodies. It pulls out almost all the stops, featuring a competitive 24.3 megapixel sensor and an environmentally sealed body, but lacking the touchscreen LCD that might be seen as standard for a body of this price. Of course, of any camera boasting a similar feature set, the X-T2 is arguably the easiest and most efficient to use, and it's doubtful you'd miss the touchscreen that much. Its most direct competition is the Sony A6500, which boasts all the same features plus a sleek touchscreen LCD, but won't be nearly as enjoyable to navigate as the X-T2's ergonomic dials and buttons. If you decide the X-T2 is the right camera for you, consider picking it up with the 1855M f/2.84 lens included. The 1855 is a capable, reasonably sharp lens that is an excellent. I highly recommend Fujifilm X-T2 as a professional great APS-C mirrorless camera that will serve the demanding landscape photographer as an extremely functional system that produces great images. Its overall feature set wins at our Best Pro Crop Award. However, before you snap up the X-T2, Definitely take a look at the X-T1 below. The number 6 position is dominated by Fujifilm X-Tone. At one time, the Fujifilm X-Tone this was my personal favorite choice among Fujifilm cameras and the pro crop category as a whole. As it is now a few years old, it's showing its age a bit. Here's the X-Tone in a nutshell, it's pretty much the same as the X-T2, but with a few less megapixels and no fork video. But it's also cheaper, and for many landscape photographers, the savings will be worth those sacrifices. The image quality is still great, its ergonomics are top-notch, and its weather-sealed body is built like a tank. As such, it's a previous winner of my Best Value Pro Crop Award. Of course, its 16-megapixel sensor is rapidly becoming dated compared to the 24-megapixel standard for APS-C sensors, and could be a deal-breaker especially with the newer and cheaper X-T20 coming into play, though the camera is not weather-sealed. Or my personal favorite is the X-Tone and kit with the Fujin and 18135 m That kit alone could allow you to shoot almost in landscape subject in a lightweight weather-sealed package and an ultra-wide Fujin in 10 24 or Rockin in 12M purchase separately could round out a nearly perfect mirrorless setup for a great value to boot. If you're willing to accept the lower resolution sensor, the X-T1 gets you into a weather-sealed body at a discount. Moving on to the next at number 7 with Olympus OMDE Moan Mark Roman 2. The Olympus OMDE Moan Mark Roman 2 is one beast of a camera. It's got essentially every high-end capability imaginable, with Bluetooth and geotagging capabilities being the only items left out. And yes, it's got the tilt and swivel touchscreen LCD plus the fork video capability. Not absolute necessities but definitely awesome features. But here's perhaps the biggest benefit to landscape photos, its in-camera image stabilization is already becoming legendary. 
Olympus claim of 6.5 stops of stabilization seems to be legit. With some real-world hand, hell shots coming out sharp even with a shutter speed of 15 seconds. I still wouldn't give away my tripod. But that is seriously impressive. Another potential benefit. Large hand grip makes the body a little more DSLR-like. This also makes it bulkier than most mirrorless cameras. But can be a pro for photographers with big hands or the preference for carrying the camera in hand and ready to fire. The verdict? It's pricey, but if you want a true pro-quality camera in small package with some of the best image stabilization on the planet, look no further than the Olympus OMD e Mark Roman II. It's our de facto best micro four-thirds camera. But check out the Panasonic DMC G8 below as well. The number eight position is held by Panasonic Lumix DMC G H5. If you're looking for a pro-quality mirrorless with a DSLR-style body, the Panasonic Lumix DMC GH5 may be the camera for you. It's packed with high-end features like the tilt-swivel touchscreen, fork video, in-body image stabilization, and weather sealing. This camera even gives the Olympus OM-DM-1 Mark Roman II a run for its money, although I do prefer the EM-1 Mark Roman II over the GH5. Personally, this is a pretty big camera and isn't really my cup of tea. But I can see it's lore for pros making the switch to mirrorless that are trying to ease the transition. This is especially true if you have big hands or simply like the larger grip of a DSLR body, but want a little smaller size. Another potential benefit versus a similar DSLR body, this camera has an EVF that for many photographers is seen as an improvement over an optical viewfinder. Just realize this is a micro four-thirds sensor. So if you like to print larger than, say, 20 x 30 inches, this camera may not fit your style. Next at number 9, we have Sony A7R Roman II, Sony's flagship full-frame mirrorless camera. The Sony A7R Roman II features a gnarly 42-megapixel sensor that will definitely catch a ton of detail and let you print super large. And breaking the mold a bit, it's got much improved ergonomics compared to Sony's APS-C offerings, Although the menu system is still not the easiest to use, build quality is excellent, and it's got almost all the bells and whistles like fork video, just not a touchscreen LCD. Another nice feature is in-camera image stabilization, advertised as 4.5 stops worth. I could fill another paragraph or five with all of its pro-grade features, but just know that the Sony A7R Roman II is one amazing camera. If you want the highest resolution mirrorless full frame out there, this is the one. Its ridiculous specs and passable usability make it the de facto best full-frame body. But definitely check out the two cameras below for better value. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Sony A7 Roman II. If you compare the physical characteristics of this camera to the A7 R Roman II, you will see that they look exactly the same. That's good news for ergonomics as both handle well but may make you wonder why the Sony A7 Roman II costs half as much. To be honest, it's the difference of almost 20 million pixels in resolution, plus the lack of fork video. Otherwise, this is basically the same camera. If you're seriously considering a full-frame body, you need to ask yourself if the extra resolution and video capability is worth the double price upgrade to the A7R Roman II. In my opinion, the size of the sensor matters more than the difference between 24 and 42 megapixels, and since both cameras have the same sensor size, your prints aren't going to come out that much crisper with the A7R Roman II. As such, I think the Sony A7 Roman II gives you more bang for your buck and is a great value compared to its more expensive younger brother. If I was buying a new full-frame body right now, the Sony A7 Roman II would be my choice. That's all for today. We upload camera, camera accessories review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.